We've just rounded the corner at cycle 18, and we're down to about 7 starving dupes and 0 calories. This is probably going to be the cycle. Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another ridiculous one-off challenge. Today, we're going to start on cycle 1 with 75 duplicates and go until one of them meets their untimely demise. This is the 75 dupe challenge. Now, I've tried this a few different times, and so far, I can't get 75 to live past I don't know, cycle 27, maybe cycle 30? That's the reason why we're changing it up from the format of the 50 dupe challenge, where we started with 50 dupes and we went for 50 cycles, because we're not going to be able to take 75 dupes and go 75 cycles. So, we're just going to go as long as we can. Well, unless we do make it to cycle 75, and then we'll go ahead and stop there. Nice round number of sorts. Now, as you saw, we went with a classic planetoid because I want a little bit more space. 75 dupes is a lot, and we're going to need all the vents and geysers we can possibly get. And we're also going to be trying it out on a swampy asteroid for the simple reason that it comes with a bunch of polluted water everywhere. And that polluted water will be off-gassing. And I'm hoping this strategy gives us just a little bit more oxygen until we can create our own. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and shuffle it a few times. Magma channels, crashed satellites, metal rich, and medium boulders. Oh, this is going to be good. As you can see, all the game settings are set to default, and without further ado, we'll get to it. Well, ain't that about a tickle. Looks like we're trying again. Well, that doesn't happen very often, but we've got our new seed here. Metal rich, small boulders, and irregular oil. Now, because we're about to add 72 more friends, we don't really care about the starting duplicates. We're going to have plenty of every single type of dupe to include all the mouth-breathing hungry boys that are going to consume more oxygen and food. This is the point where I'm going to go into debug mode and add 72 more dupes. At the same time, I also need to name all 75 dupes, so I'll be right back. Now, if you're curious about how I chose the names for all these duplicates, I create a list from every YouTube member, Patreon member, and Twitch subscriber and I put them into Excel. I randomize all of them, and it gives me a list of 75 duplicates. And we do that as a way of saying thank you for all their support. Once we're done with all the renaming, we actually have to restart the game in order to get out of debug mode. I suppose you could play in debug mode. I would rather make sure that you know that everything done on this colony is on the up and up. And as you can see, after the restart, there is no D appended to the end of the build number. If there were, you'd know I was still in debug mode. Now, normally before I would start one of these, I'd probably adjust the schedule and get everything nice and tight. This time, we're not gonna. In fact, I'm not even gonna be in a hurry to build any bathrooms. Because the strategy going in is to let them pee themselves. And then we can breathe off the fumes of their urine. Look, you didn't think this was going to be all cupcakes and roses, did you? We're also going to queue up a bunch of dig commands immediately and start to expand out, going in both directions and up and down. Now, immediately, one of the problems is going to be that 75 dupes are going to breathe all the oxygen in this cavity pretty quickly. So as soon as we have a little bit of material, we're going to start building some oxygen producing devices. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Looking around, I don't see any metal ores until we hit here. So we definitely going to need those. The good news, though, is with all this water dropped, it's going to provide a lot of oxygen for us. Well, looks like we have some flatulent dupes, too. Now, each sublimation station is going to use one kilo of polluted dirt per second. And for that polluted dirt, they're actually going to provide oxygen for about five dupes. Now, I don't say six, because remember, when a duplicate is breathing polluted oxygen, they're going to get the yucky lungs, which means, in effect, they're going to be breathing more oxygen. We're also going to make sure that we dig in through here, because this cavity has a lot of oxygen waiting for us to breathe. We have three sublimation stations down, and that's only going to be enough for about 15 dupes. With our newfound materials, we've started the process of digging both up and down on both sides of the colony. Really looking forward to tapping into some of these early oxygen caverns. You may also notice that we only have 18,400 calories. That's not even enough food for a third of our colony for one cycle. So it's time to put down some wonderful microbe mushers. I suppose we're going to start by putting our tank sort of down here. It's going to be a bunch of polluted water, but we want to make sure it is as wide as possible. So hopefully we can use it as an extra source of oxygen. Right now, it looks bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Now, unfortunately, it looks like we only have 6.4 tons worth of dirt. 
We're going to be able to make more dirt, but not until we get the sludge press. Our mush bars take 75 kilos per, so we need to be very careful. Not to mention they also need a clean source of water. I guess that's what this is going to be used for. Well, at least temporarily. You know, the great thing about having this many dupes is you're not hurting on labor. I mean, look how much we've dug up, and it's not even the end of cycle one yet. It's also really good. We're going to be able to grab a bunch of this swamp chard. That is certainly going to help out the calorie situation. And the fun and games already start. It's mealtime, and we have 29 duplicates who have unreachable food. Don't worry about it. You'll find some tomorrow, I'm sure. It looks like a lot of the dupes have decided to sleep on top of the ladder. Wouldn't have been my first choice, but okay. Oh, yes. It's almost bathroom time. Go ahead, dupes. Just let it go. One of the more difficult things in this early game is making sure the duplicates don't die. There's just so many opportunities for them to find a way to get stuck or just get confused. Like in this case. Well, this could be the earliest run ever. I'm going to need you to go up that ladder a little quicker. You may see this as a little bucket of pee, but I consider it a little bucket of oxygen. We don't have a lot of food, so it's probably time to start planting some crops. Here we have a couple of research stations all ready to go. So I think we're going to head directly into planter boxes and then follow it up maybe with some jumbo batteries. But we'll see. We're going to play this one fast and loose. All right, guys. How'd you end up up here? This doesn't look like a great place. Now, under our consumable sections, we're going to allow the dupes to eat Yes, everything. Every fish we find, well, that's a nice little fish fillet. This may seem to be wasteful, but remember, any of these sort of ranches, by the time you got them going, your dupes would have already starved to death. Because remember, we're not trying to make a real colony. We're just trying to see how far we can get 75 dupes. The strategies are just a little bit different. Now, the letting the dupes soil themselves strategy is only going to work for so long. As you can see, we have a lot of dupes climbing up the stress ladder. Leading the charge, Ghost Rider, Fat B-Man, and Bushman Glen. In order to combat this, we're just going to be mopping up the water as we go. The little bottles have the advantage of still off-gassing and not making our dupes sopping wet. I think that's the last cycle we're going to allow that to happen, though. We're at 84% on the stress meter. If we take Fat B-Man, for example, they are hungry, sopping wet, unrested because they're afraid of the dark. Look, I can't help that. You could have slept by the printing pod. Yucky lungs, chilly surroundings, and low oxygen. And since we will be putting in bathrooms now, it's probably best that we separate these 75 dupes into at least a couple of schedules, huh? Using the wrinkly part of my brain, I separated our dupes into eight different shifts, all of them evenly distributed across the day. So at any one point of time, there will only be nine duplicates sleeping. Well, a couple of schedules have ten. But that also means now we need at least ten bathrooms. I think we're going to go with a five on the right and five on the left sort of strategy. Actually, I might separate them by levels a little bit as well. That way, I can even further distribute the polluted oxygen bottles that they're going to create. All the meanwhile, still keeping them in rooms. Our first pod was pretty uneventful. All we found was a little bit of meat. We're getting ready to hit cycle five, and let's be honest, these dupes are living the good life. Yes, they now have four bathrooms. Not only do they not have to pee their pants, but they're also getting plus one morale while they use it. And for our graciousness, we're actually starting to reduce the stress levels in the colony. Well, that and because we mopped up all the water. We've also gone to the steps of putting in a nice little massage room. Of course, apparently it doesn't count as a massage room because we have some industrial machinery in here. Give me another minute. There we go. Much better. A beautiful little massage clinic. Now, this is only for the dupes that are having the hardest of times. They have to be above 90% stress before they get called to this room. But because it's a massage clinic, their stress is going to go down even faster. I mean, we're all about providing the dupes a good life here. Oxygen actually doesn't look that bad. We're not going to talk about food, but at least they can breathe. There is some bad news, though. Apparently, there's an abyssalite break at the bottom of the colony. I say that because you can see we have an overheated battery and two broken buildings. When you click on them, it brings us all the way down here, which tells me this is close to our magma biome, and it's probably a point of interest building that is scalding a little bit. Now, I'm guessing the reason that we could detect these is because we went into debug mode to add the 72 extra dupes. But more importantly, for the future of this colony, we need to start looking at resources. We're currently supplying mush bars using nine microbe mushers. Not too bad, but not very sustainable. 
Now we are sitting at 34 tons of dirt, 78 tons of mud, 222 tons of polluted dirt, and 50 tons of polluted mud. I say all that because we just unlocked the sludge press. And what the sludge press is going to do for us, and one of the primary reasons that we're trying this challenge on the swampy map, is give us more dirt and water, and more polluted dirt and polluted water. Well, let's follow that string, shall we? We're using the dirt and water to create food. And then we're using polluted dirt in our sublimation stations, and the polluted water to feed our bog buckets. So as long as we have enough mud, we have a fighting chance to making it to cycle 75 without losing a single dupe. Our second pod came with a couple of pip eggs. Now we're going to grab them because it's not like we're going to grab any dupes. But unfortunately, we can't turn those little pip eggs into some beautiful fluffy omelets. Which brings up a point that I wanted to show you. When you go to your skills page, the little crown next to each skill tells you how many duplicates you have in the colony with that skill. For instance, on hard digging, both Whiskey T Fox and Squish Hat already have the skill. On super hard digging, Lloyd Navarro Jr., Zadnax, Eilart, and Patrick Gordon. And finally, we even have duplicates that start with super duper hard digging in Glenn Sullivan, Miko Nala, and Lady Ruff. Unfortunately, we didn't start with a single dupe that could do grilling. So we're going to have to wait a little while until we get a duplicate that levels up so we can throw them into grilling. So at a minimum, we can start cooking all the mush bars into mush fry. A whole bunch of our skill points have come in. After all said and done, we ended up with 12 duplicates who had an interest in grilling. That's really going to help keep the mush fry flowing. And the reason why we care is because we can take every 800 calorie mush bar and turn it into a 1050 calorie mush fry. And eventually we're going to have some bog buckets coming up. When that happens, we're going to start making some swampy delights because they also increase the calories. I also wanted to show you Sludge Press Headquarters. We have one Sludge Press set to forever on the polluted mud side and the other set to forever on the regular mud side. We have two pipes. They go all the way over here and drop off into our wonderful little polluted water and regular water tanks. And you might be wondering, Echo, how long can you hope to survive on products made from mud? Well, I'm hoping at least 75 cycles. Look at all that glorious mud! On the research front, we finished up advanced research and are now heading towards the carbon skimmer. I suppose we could also start using the deodorizer around. If we could start encircling all these sublimation stations with deodorizers, it would cause the dupes to breathe a lot less oxygen. For instance, Dorito Spee here has the yucky lungs I was telling you about, which means they're consuming an extra 30 grams per second of oxygen. When you multiply that times 75 dupes, that comes out to be... 2250 grams of oxygen so by breathing polluted oxygen it's almost like we're running 97 dupes instead of 75 at least on the oxygen front the third printing pod actually brought us more food about 500 kilos worth so looking at the earlier idea about running a bunch of deodorizers i don't know how long that would work we only have 2200 kilos worth of sand yeah, we could start running rock crushers and everything else, but at some point we need to start thinking about duplicate labor. Believe it or not, we don't see too many idle messages, because we have a lot of wheels to run on, a lot of micro mushers to use, and even the adorable sludge press room also requires duplicate labor. Oh my goodness, we've actually made it to a bog bucket harvest, and no, you can't eat the bog jellies. Sorry, Grignac, no bog jellies for you. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself that the bog buckets require a lot of polluted water. And you'd be right, at 40 kilos per cycle. But it's not like we're not already using a bunch of water anyways. The mush bars themselves require 75 kilos worth of water. And if you don't turn those into mush fry, it's not even enough for one meal for a duplicate. Cycle 10 update, we're actually going to lower the massage tables down to 75. Considering we're up over 14,000 calories and we're doing pretty good on oxygen, I figured we'll improve the duplicate's quality of life. Just a little bit. Also, we raised the priority of cooking errands across the entire colony. That way, these microbe mushers are being used close to 100% of the time. It also helps by ensuring that the electric grills are used as much as possible. We also started giving everybody their hats. Now, this wasn't because I wanted to make the duplicates happy and let them wear their precious little hat, but rather when I am in the priorities and I see that they're wearing a hat, I can make sure they're prioritizing that skill instead. 
For cooking, everybody's doing it because everybody can use the micro musher. And over in the skills, we assigned everybody their first skill point. And this is probably where it'll stop because the first one is the only free one. Because remember, this first row of skills has a morale requirement of one. But if the duplicate has an interest in it, they're given plus one morale for having that skill. So for duplicates who have an interest in a specific trait, the first tier skills are basically free. We're also going around collecting all the polluted dirt and dirt that we can find around the colony. Because little places like this might mean the difference when we're reaching for scraps of polluted dirt. And as expected, we're starting to have carbon dioxide problems, so we're putting in a system to combat that. Pretty simple, we're grabbing the water from our clean water tank that's being supplied from our beautiful sludge presses and sending it to a pair of carbon skimmers. One here on the left side of the base, and then one here on the right side of the base. Once the carbon skimmer uses that clean water to skim the carbon, we're then taking all that polluted water and sending it right back to the polluted water tank. And one of the great things about the carbon skimmer is it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we're not actually going to be losing any water by doing this. The only thing we're really losing is a little bit of duplicate labor running on the wheel to provide the power. Speaking of which, I think it's time to start consolidating some of these sublimation stations. I actually think we might have went overboard just a little bit. Right now, we have 17 sublimation stations, which is providing enough oxygen for 112 dupes. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just we have duplicates on wheels just about everywhere. And we're still not seeing any idle dupes. I think I realized what our next bit of research is. Just like with the skill points, every little bit helps around this colony. So we're actually going in for fire poles. Because for as much as duplicates have to go up and down these ladders, it would be great to allow them to zoom zoom down. I probably also should start thinking about barracks. Every last duplicate has the sore back debuff which gives them all a minus one to athletics. But there's a reason why you don't see barracks or mess halls quite yet. Putting barracks in requires a concentration of oxygen, one that I'm not quite sure we want to deal with yet. Also, the mess tables make it to where the duplicate has to go grab the food and then take it all the way over the mess table. And while we are hovering around 20,000 calories, every cycle has a couple of duplicates that hits the starvation point. So I'm not excited about a duplicate who might be starving going to grab some food and then going, well, now I gotta take it to the mess table, but that might be something else that the fire poles help out with. Coming around to cycle 14, and we have run into a problem. Apparently, we're using a lot more dirt than I expected. And while every time we use one of the sludge presses, we're given 60 kilos worth of dirt, every mush bar requires 75 kilos. We've supplemented our dirt using some composts, prioritizing locations that are a little chilly anyways, because those composts are going to get pretty hot. But each compost only provides 100 grams per second of dirt, which means after an entire cycle of using a compost, you're only going to be able to get 60 kilos worth of dirt out of it, or not even a full mush bar worth. And this might be the problem with the swampy start in this challenge. You just don't have enough dirt to get yourself to sustainability. We've got bog buckets growing, but unfortunately we only have so many seeds. And now we've gotten ourselves into a situation where this whole machine requires so much dupe labor, we don't have time to get to other things, like digging or building. So I have a feeling this attempt is about to come to a close. We'll see though, we have about 10,000 calories. I'd love to be able to get into these Sweetles and start ranching them, but there's no way this map has enough sulfur. I mean, truth be told, it does have a lot of geysers, but none of them give us dirt or food. I already switched the other sludge press over to mud as well, so we have two sludge presses both producing the dirt in the water, but even with 75 dupes and them being on a priority of six, they're still going idle more often than I'd like. In fact, this last sludge press was only used 40% of the time in the last five cycles. That ain't gonna cut it. I'm gonna try prioritizing the fire pole. This may give us the little bit of speed boost that we need to be able to get to these errands a little bit quicker. And I know, if they had cots in a barracks, they wouldn't be getting the minus one to athletics. But by this point, most of the dupes have an increased athletic score because of the manual generator. Like Whiskey here, their overall athletics is zero. Yeah, they have the sore back at minus one, but they also have pointed up in it, making it to where the sore back's not really hurting them. Additionally, Ghost Rider here just woke up, and you can see that the sore back only lasts for a half a cycle. So is having that sore back debuff for a half a cycle worth not having to put barracks in? I'm not 100% sure, but right now, I'm still fine with not having cots. 
halfway through cycle 16 and we're still trucking. We've managed to find 36 tons of dirt and we did that by just going around and looking for tiles. And there's still a little bit here and there, but definitely not enough to keep up our mush bar production. We've also added in two more sludge presses to do everything we can to maintain our levels of dirt. I mean, why can't we make mush bars out of polluted dirt? We have 270 tons of it and plenty more where that came from. I mean, yeah, I get it. We could throw down a million more composts, but then it's just going to get way too hot around here. Despite that, we've added another run down here at the bottom, one on the left side, and then another one on the right side. But composts are definitely not the answer. In fact, if you do the math, by taking 75 duplicates all requiring 75 kilos worth of dirt per cycle for a mush bar, and assuming all those mush bars are going to be turned into mush fries, it would take 93 composts. 93! Ain't nobody got time for that! So I think the solution is in adding more sludge presses. So we're going to add another sludge press station, but keep in mind, we only have 80 tons of mud. You can't make this stuff up. I have eight duplicates getting ready to starve. And look at all these glorious bog buckets. I swear I think everything in this colony is on a six right now. We've just rounded the corner at cycle 18 and we're down to about seven starving dupes and zero calories. This is probably going to be the cycle. We've managed to get up to 54 tons worth of dirt, but now the limitation is actually water. We do have one pump here, but with only one pitcher pump in the water, the duplicates can't use it fast enough in order to supply all of the microbe mushers with the water they need. So we're going to try to put in a couple more pitcher pumps, but it's not looking good. Look at this. We found a little bit of clean water. There's also some down here that we're going to start getting into as well. Eventually, if we make it that long, we'll be able to sieve all the polluted water, turning it into regular water. But I was really hoping we'd be more sustainable on bog buckets by now. We also need to go exploring because there's a cool slush geyser, cool salt slush geyser, and a salt water geyser somewhere around this colony. But right now, all the dupes are running on wheels, making dirt, or spending the dirt by making mush bars. Apparently our digging and exploring has come in handy. We're up to 30,000 calories in Swamp Chart Heart. And there's even some more down here that we're going to get to as soon as possible. We're actually up over 50,000 calories, a lot of it in mush bar. We're also putting a liquid pump inside the polluted water tank. We're going to start sieving. We don't have a lot of sand, just over a ton, but it should definitely help supplement some of our water usage. But with this many calories, I mean, it's almost a full cycle's worth. I think we need to start exploring more. Up here would give us access to the Sweetle and the Spindly Grubfruit plant, and there's a little bit of sulfur in here. It's not a lot, but there's also a bunch of sand in here as well. So, up we go. Now, whether or not the duplicates are going to cooperate, who knows. But this would be a perfect area for a nice Spindly Grubfruit farm as well. I think we're also just going to burrow right through this uranium ore. During the starvation crisis of cycle 18 or 19 or 20, we turned all the micro mushers up to priority 7. I think we're going to relax that to priority 6. I mean, 64,000 calories is just way too many for us to be having on the books. But so far, I'm pretty satisfied with our success here in this colony. Now, normally, I only like these challenges to be one-offs. Unfortunately, I fully expected a duplicate to be dead by now. So we're going to go ahead and make this a to-be-continued. Part 2 will probably be coming out in a week because we still want to keep up our progress with our mini base. But let me know in the comments below how you think we're doing and what you'd be doing differently. As a reminder, we have another channel called Echo Ridge Unabridged. It's where we post all of our videos that we originally stream over on Twitch. And we're only about 400 subscribers away from being able to monetize that channel as well. So if you want to support the channel and you think you might occasionally like to put some Echo Live on in the background, head on over to Echo Ridge Unabridged and consider hitting the subscribe button. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a great time in this challenge. So until next time, happy gaming and I'll talk to you soon.